All right, CMT 120, we're on the last little chunk of Chapter 4 here where they remind us or show us a few commands that we would use when we're troubleshooting some of these, uh, some of these issues with routers, routes, networks, that sort of thing. So let's take a look at them, and I'll try to do a little bit of show for you as well. One of the first ones they talk about is NetStat. This allows us to display, display TCP IP stats for a host or a node. Um, this can be handle, handy for looking at what kind of connections are there, what kind of connections are open, what kind of traffic flow is there from a host. Um, think about a server. Server is going to have certain TCP port numbers open to respond to requests. So I might need to see what kind of on what kind of ports are open, what kind of communications going on or not going on on a server or a particular host. So NetStat allows me to do that. Uh, and they give you a whole bunch of switch options here for looking at specific aspects of this. And again, you might use one or two of these or a couple of these to try to narrow down what kind of communications going on or not going on on a particular node. Um, let's take a look at some of those with our Windows system here. So here's my Windows system. If I do a plain old, actually, I, our screen went away there. There we go. If I do a plain old net stat and just do a question mark behind, it actually shows a bunch of these switches that the book was talking about. And it gives you a little description behind each one on what they do. Dash A, dash B, dash E, and so forth. So let's take a look at a couple of common ones they pointed out for us. If we just do plain old net stat, this is kind of like a whole bunch of active connections that are going on. The first batch you see here is a a bunch of loop back, a bunch of your individual machine. What is open on your individual machine? Then it starts listing to what IP and what port number is there a connection. Maybe this is a uh, a ping that's gone on before or a, a particular application or protocol that's communicating. So again, if you're trying to troubleshoot what's going on, we would look at the IP, whether it's this machine or another one, and port number. What port number is that? What is communicating on that? Um, these might be known applications or these might be known problems from software, spyware, that kind of thing. Um, so this allows us to see what is what is connected, what is being used as far as TCP port number. If I keep going, it's it's actually still running and checking them all. I'm going to try to uh, cancel that connection there. All right, come on, there we go. If I keep going and start doing dash N dash F and so forth, you get an idea that it just changes the output a little bit before you. I think dash N doesn't numerically for you. So going up numerically, if I'm trying to find one in particular, maybe there's a known uh, software problem that's running on a certain port number or that sort of thing. This allows me to put them in numerical order. Uh, the dash F, this one actually shows... And we can also look at uh, NSTAT, NSTAT-A, that shows all of the connections. This would be a much larger list, uh, but it's going to actually build a whole uh, table of all connections it has. And again, if you're really trying to troubleshoot a specific issue, you might want to see all connections it has. We'll let that build. Uh, and the last one we'll look at down here, the, the dash E shows your Ethernet statistics. And actually here shows TCP and any UDP ports it has as well. Very large list in this case, but again, if you're trying to track down a particular protocol or issue, you might want to see the full list. Uh, Dash E is one of the last ones they mentioned. This shows your Ethernet statistics, shows you unicast, etc. Uh, you notice this is a quick little snapshot in time, how many, how much it's received versus how much it's sent. And if I were actually do, let me open up a new command prompt here. And I will look at my Ethernet statistics now. And if I turn right around and do a ping to something like google.com, I'll let that run. So I've sent some more data packets out and received some more data packets. So if I reissue that dash E, I'll see all my numbers climb. Uh, we had uh 1148 now we have 5304 so we see a change in that allows me to see if if i'm looking for data moving coming that sort of thing that allows me to see stats of so there's a little bit about net stat on our windows machine if i i'm going to jump over here to my vm wake up vm 
and on my Linux machine, I see that I also have Netstat option available. And I'm going to do the switch TUAN because that looks very similar to what we're used to on the Windows system, showing me my TCP and UDP port connections. This is a lot smaller because it's a virtual machine, but you get the same idea. Uh, I can see the same kind of thing. And I think over here as well, I can do dash E to show Ethernet statistics. Now, that's not the one I want. Um, let me get the right switch. Oh, there we go. Dash S is the one we want. So we'll do dash S. And there shows my statistics. This breaks it out a little bit further on TCP, UDP, etc. And I can even come up here and it shows me ICMP, IP and ICMP uh, traffic or uh, stats, I should say. Here's 12 ICMP messages it's received. So again, if I were to do, let me pull up another command prompt here and do a ping of www.google.com, send out a few more data bytes, a few more packets, if you will. If I reissue this dash S and come up here and look at my ICMP messages now, we have 17 messages. So again, as, as, as things change, this is, you're able to see changes with this by re repeating your NetStack command. So there's NetStat a little bit on Windows and a little bit on Linux, giving the idea of showing you your TCP stats or using some of your other switches to see other information. One of the next commands they talk about is trace route, trace RT or trace route. Um, they, they're both the trace function. On your Windows system, you use trace RT. On Linux and Apple, you use trace route. Well, this utility um, does an actual kind of like step, step, step. It actually sends a message out to the first node that can respond, uh, and this first node responds back. So it now learns that, and it goes one more step further, responds back, and so forth. And it does that so it's trying to learn the path that data is moving to get to the destination node. And actually does something very sneaky. When it sends out the first uh, message, if you will, it does a TTL of 1. When well, time data moves through a router, that decrements, that, that, that decreases. So when a decrease happens, it sends an error back of like, hey, your TTL exceeded. So I send out a message to this first router of TTL1. It decreases that to zero. The router sends back an error message of, like, hey, your TTL exceeded. Well, now I just learned the information about router one. So now I send a new one out with TTL of two. So it goes through this router. When it hits this one, it gets to zero. This router sends a message back on, hey, your TTL expired. And I do that, I keep repeating that, and that's what they talk about here. It's a kind of a trial and error approach. I keep repeating that until I get to my destination. One further, one further, one further, one further. And that allows me to see or learn the whole path it takes to a destination and see the whole path. Now, it is only one little snapshot in time, but if I know um, a, a regular data path that I'm using to get from Harrisburg campus to York campus network of hack um, and I'm running this trace route and I see a change then I'm like okay what's going on or I see a failure then I'm like okay we might have a problem part way through that's what this allows me to start doing and here's a whole bunch of options I can do with trace route well let's just do real simple I'm going to show you trace trace RT and trace route I'm going to go to my Windows machine here Actually, I think I have two windows open now. There we go. I'll close that one. I'll use this one. And I'm just going to do a trace RT. And I'll do, um, let's try uh, Google.com. Google.com. Now, this takes a couple seconds because it's got to hit each device along the way and report back. So I'm going to let that run. While that's running, I'm going to come over here to Linux. And let's do the same thing. I will come in here and I will do a trace route and do Google as well. And we'll let it run. So these are both trying to learn how it's getting from here the whole way out to Google.com. And here you're saying, hey, we hit this IP, then we hit this IP, then we hit this IP, then we hit this IP. Uh, now, these don't mean much unless you know your network and or path. So then I start using this information. Of, well, this is normal. This is normal. This is normal. Hey, I'm having a problem. Well, one thing I do need to realize is there are certain devices like firewalls and maybe some routers that are programmed to not respond to this information. So I'm going to guess right off the bat, this is hitting, you know, the college firewall and it's not responding to me. So, okay, that's all right. I'll over here over my 
to my Linux machine, I see the same thing. I have some device not responding, but it got outside and it kept on its path to the destination. So first off, this is the path my computer used to get to Google.com. And it learned it by hitting the first one, and then the second one, then the third one, and it's printing this information as it goes. Well, for you and I right now, this is kind of like, oh, neato. Uh, but if I am actually working with this path every day, I would start learning all these IPs and knowing what they are. And if I have a failure here, then I'd be worried about the issue and I'd start troubleshooting in this ballpark between these two, two uh, devices, if you will. That's where this becomes useful. Let's go back here and see if Windows has gotten any further. Yeah, it looks like Windows is getting hung up on the firewall. Linux, may, Linux managed to uh, plow through, but Windows might, uh, is getting hung up on that. So I'll cancel that for now. We'll, we'll let it do its thing. Hopefully it'll, it'll eventually work its way through. But there you get the idea of that's what your trace route allows you to do. Again, this is really, really useful if you know the path that things are normally taking. Because uh, you can see a problem when it occurs. Anything out of the ordinary occurs, you know it's a problem. Now, that's a uh, trace router, uh, trace RT is a one time deal. If I use something like PathPing or on Linux MTR, it's going to repeat this process over and over again and build you some average over time. So let me start running on this guy here and see how Windows does with this. We're going to do a PathPing and it's going to, it's actually going to continually do it over and over again and try to build an average for us. So there it is running on Windows. There's PathPing running on Windows to that same entity, that same device. Over here on Linux, we're going to do MTR of Google.com. Google.com. So let's do our password there. Now it's going to launch a little uh, GUI program here. And here you can actually see a little bit better what it's doing. It is actually doing a ping to that node over and over and over again, 10, 11, 12 times, 13 times. It's actually trying that path over and over again and building some data for me. Uh, the last time it did it, the average time it did, the best, the worst, so forth. Now I can start looking at the average column and going, well, that's the average that I get there. And again, we're seeing a little red line here. This this is probably the firewall not responding to us. That's okay. Um but there you can actually see that's what the path ping or mice trace route is really doing. If I go back to Windows, it's probably still working on it. Yeah, it's computing some stats over time. You don't see so much what Windows is doing. Linux is showing it to you. They're both doing that process. So it's kind of like a trace and ping over and over and over again, building an average for you. Quite useful if you're trying to troubleshoot a particular problem. I'll pause that. I'll quit that. So again, a little bit on trace route and in this case, path ping and... Um, MTR, so I'm going to cancel that. There we go. You get the idea of what it's working on or what it's doing. The last one we see is TC dump. This is uh, TCP dump. This is uh, a, a Linux thing. It is very similar to Wireshark that's available at the command line. So it's like a command line packet sniffer on Linux. And here's an output of it. So I'm going to go over to my Linux VM again. Here's my command prompt, and I'm going to issue the command sudo tcp dump, and I'm going to put ICMP after. That way it's just filtering ICMP information. So it's now running, and it's got to capture any TCP data that it is, it is um, seeing on the network. So I'm going to do, I will do a ping to google.com. Oops, hold on there, hold on there. There we go. Now we got a ping going. Now we see the pings coming in over here. Okay, so I'll stop my ping. So my TCP dump, I'll even stop that too. Um, here is actually those ping packets, echo request, echo reply, uh, that my machine just issued out to Google.com. And in this case, uh, our, our command line is showing this to us. So this is like a command line wire shark. It's showing me these packets in real time. Again, kind of handy if you don't have that particular program or that GUI installed. I can actually do it through command line. Pretty sneaky, pretty handy. As I like to say, that's kind of like, you know, silver or gold le uh, level uh, nerd stuff right there. So there's the last little chunk of stuff in our chapter four.